There he is, the boss dog. He always wants to go back to the car. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. December 11th, 2024. Let's get into it. Story of the day. Nobody's really talking about it. We got an alien invasion going on, man. I'm not talking illegal aliens. I'm talking actual aliens. Before it happened, no one would have believed that our world was being watched. And yet, across the gulf of space, an enemy regarded this Earth with their envious eyes. And slowly, drew their plans against us. Now I got some speculation on that, but I, I want to get right to the, the heart of the matter. Let me just read this to you. FBI senior official says Bureau doesn't know <laughs> who's operating the New Jersey drones or whether they pose a risk to the national security uh, incident. I, so, if, what? And everybody's not, you know, nervous about a bunch of alien drones flying over New Jersey. Not only New Jersey, they've been all over Great Britain. Evidently, they can't hardly track these things if they... I, where, I mean, okay, let's watch the video of that FBI official talking about this. What is going on in New Jersey? So, sir, the FBI and our Newark field office, along with the state and local partners there, um, are, or the Bureau is actively investigating the, the situation you mentioned, just the unexplained um, sighting of drone activity um, over, uh, over that part of New Jersey. Um, including uh, proximity to sensitive sites and uh, uh, areas of concern. So the, um, we do not attribute that to an individual or a group yet. Uh, we're investigating, but I don't have an answer of who's responsible for that, of um, one or more people that are responsible for those um, drone flights. Um, but we're actively invest investigating what the... Um, Bureau has done to aid our state and local partners uh, is what we generally do, um, enlist the help of uh, the interagency, uh, enlist the help of the public. There's a tip line there, um, that 1-800-CALL-FBI, um, tips.fbi, um, for um, information from the public that could help us uh, resolve this. It is concerning. Um, is, there, is, is the uh, public at risk? Is, is public safety at risk? Are we concerned that there are nefarious intentions that could cause uh, either national security or, or a public safety incident that would put Americans at risk? There is nothing that is known that would um, uh, lead me to, to say that, um, but we just don't know, and that's the concerning part. Okay, so that, that was the video of him. So now, you know, what I'm questioning is, okay, all right, now you're the governor of New Jersey. Well, of course, we got the Biden administration. They're not going to do shit to help America. They're probably hoping that the aliens blow up the United States. That's who Democrats are. They want the United States annihilated. But if you're the governor of the state, you do understand the governor has the National Guard. <laughs> I mean, and the National Guard has fighter planes. At least they did in Michigan. I assume New Jersey does, too. You know, they've also got pretty much uh, all the equipment that the the uh, active duty armed forces has. Where Where's the mobilization? In New Jersey. I would hope that DeSantis, if it was flying over top of Florida, would be doing something about it. You know. But anyway, let's, let's watch what the New Jersey governor had to say about the drones. The drones in New Jersey, in Morris County, 20, uh, I don't know how many... Mayor sent a letter to you this morning asking for a clarification. What can you tell us what is going on and why is it taking so long to come up with an explanation? Yeah, it's a good, uh, I, I don't blame people for being frustrated. Let me say most importantly right up front, we see no evidence, and I say we, this includes Homeland Security, FBI, Secret Service, our state police, 
uh, authorities at all levels of government. Uh, the most important point to say is we don't see any concern for public safety. That's number one. Number two, having said that, it's really frustrating uh, that we, we don't have more answers as to where they're coming from and why they're doing what they're doing. We had last night 49 sightings. I think 20 of them were over 100. Uh, now, those include, I think I saw one mistaken a fixed wing uh, aircraft, a plane, a small Piper Cub, for instance, for a drone, or you saw one and that counts, and then I saw the same one and that counts. So we think these are overstated, but they're, it's, it's a non-zero number. I was on with the White House and Homeland Security leadership literally at the very top yesterday, uh, for pretty much all day. I'm hoping we'll get answers sooner than later. I would just ask folks to continue to let the FBI or their local law enforcement know when they see something, and we'll continue to do everything we, we can with our federal partners to get clearer answers. Why is it so hard to get answers? These are apparently very, as I understand it, very sophisticated. The minute you get eyes on them, they, they go dark. Um, and, you know, we're obviously con most concerned about uh, uh, sensitive targets and sensitive critical infrastructure. So we've got military assets, we've got utility assets, we've got the president elects one of his homes here. This is something we're taking deadly seriously. We've gotten good cooperation out of the feds, but we need more, and that's that was my plea. Finally, how long, how much longer do you think we I don't, get I don't know, but uh, if we have news, I'll come, I'll, I'll let you know. The minute, the minute we know something, I'm not gonna hide it under a bushel. Yeah, Governor, you have, you know, people saying, you know, I saw a drone and it was spraying something, or I saw a drone yep. crash in my yard and it set it off an alarm when I tried to go near it. There's a lot of fear. Yeah. New Jersey residents. I mean, what is your message? Well, the, the message I just gave. But by the way, we're we're not aware of any nefarious drone that has crashed, or if or if there is one that's crashed, could someone please call me and let me know where that is? There are a couple of rumored uh, uh, downings for one reason or another. One of them was a toy. The other one was never found. Uh, but having something, having our hands on equipment that's on the ground would be helpful. No question about. It. All right, so that's the, the first two videos. I'm hitting on this story first because I we got an alien invasion, <laughs> and it's hardly even making the news. I don't even understand it. All right, so you're here today. Um, you were just inside. You walked out. Why? I walked out because it, it was it was worthless. It was the biggest amateur hour presentation I've ever seen about anything. Okay, it was ridiculous. There were no answers. Uh, every question that was asked by the, a member of the state legislature, great questions, no answers, no resolution. They don't know where the drones are coming from. They don't know who's doing it. They don't know why they're doing it. But they say there's no credible threat. It was annoying to be there. I drove two hours to be here today. Spent an hour in there. I got to drive two hours back. The biggest waste of five hours in my entire life. So why do you think yeah. they called this meeting? I have no idea. Why would you call a meeting and tell people you don't know anything? I have no idea. And then when the legislators would ask questions, there were no answers. Here's the most frustrating part. The colonel of the state police said that he had a helicopter of his flying over above one of these drones, a six-foot drone or something. I can't remember exactly what he said. And he just, he felt unsafe for his helicopter, so he just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. Where'd it go? Who knows? You know, didn't want to follow it because you didn't feel safe. That is that not the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? I mean, honestly. Do they have any? Uh, do they have any idea where these drones are originating? No, they don't. They would. Maybe if they followed that sucker when it landed, they would know. But they don't. This is this is a complete lack of effort in my opinion, on trying to figure this out. This is not about ability. We have the technology, we have the people, we have the training, we have the resources, we have the money. It's just a lack of effort. I mean, they Why? should- Why? I don't know, I don't know. They should be saying, you know what they should have done today? With productive use of our time, if they didn't know anything, come in there and say, hey, legislators, we don't know anything, but if you get us these 10 things, do these 10 things for us, and the governor calls in this kind of action, we can figure it out. Will you help us? And then we would have helped them. But instead, it was just excuse after excuse, and we know nothing. It was infuriating, and I got up and I walked out. You've been in the service, right? Yeah, I was an attack helicopter pilot, Apache helicopter pilot in the Army, and I helped stand up the initial um, uh, unmanned aircraft training battalion in the aviation sector of the Army. So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about, and these guys are not doing the job they need to do to figure out what's going on, and that is the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and the state police. And they're saying no, no threat to, to Americans. They're saying no threat, but how the hell do they know? They don't know anything. They don't know what it is. They don't know where it come from. They, they don't know nothing. When I walked in here today, I was actually pretty calm. 
I was excited to be here to find out a couple things. I thought they'd be like, hey, listen, it's FedEx trying to figure out. But instead, I got the most ridiculous amateur hour briefing I've ever sat through. Wow, that's truly upsetting. Yep. You know, this should, this should be the, I mean, okay, Syria. You know, if you want to learn about Syria, go watch Judge Napolitano with Pepe Escobar or Colonel McGregor. They'll give you everything you want to know about what's happening in Syria. So I ain't even going to hardly talk about it. I, I might give you just a brief summary in this video, but uh, they know a hell of a lot more than I do. I just watch them and go, hmm, very interesting. You'll learn it, especially with Pepe. Pepe, uh, he did a great job. But anyway, getting back to the alien invasion, you know, I, all right, so let's, there was a, uh, I want to say it was on Redacted, but I can't remember where it was. But anyway, they supposedly, in this video, or maybe it was a book I read, we're sharing this earth with another species that actually lives in the ocean, okay? Now you're, oh, that cybersecurity guy is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Well, it might have been Billy. I want to say Billy, the guy that talks to aliens. He's been on Redacted. And I'm going to go up onto his website, see if it, it was him. If I can find the information, I'll put it in this video. But anyway, uh, supposedly when the Earth is, it, you know, on the brink of global thermonuclear war, uh, he said, or whoever it was, I can't remember, said that they would reveal themselves. Now, have you seen, they're saying these are saucers. No, man, these are flying orbs. These are flying orbs. And they, and it looks like they got a force shield around them uh, from the videos that I've seen. It's the craziest thing ever. You know, I mean, what the hell? <laughs> you know, and it was redacted. Uh, I, I want to say they were the ones that showed the, uh, the orb uh, look of, of the drones. Or they say they're, they're calling them drones. That's another dumb thing. But then so the government, you know, I guess they want to calm down the American people or the ones that are, even know about it because nobody's reporting on it except me, uh, that there was a, a senator or a representative got up. I won't even show you this video. It's too stupid to believe. He said, well, this is obviously the Iranians <laughs> and the Chinese and that they got a mothership parked off the coast uh, you know, of the, of the East Coast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, okay, maybe our entire Navy is over in uh, uh, China, the China Sea, and the rest of it's in the Mediterranean Sea. I, I mean, that's a possibility, but I can't believe that if there was a mothership launching drones <laughs> at the United States, that they, maybe even, well, I know some of the Coast Guard's overseas too. But I would think we got one or two ships here in the United States that would be looking for that mothership, don't you? <laughs> but anyway, I think what happened was they realized that spinning the story that way made them look like fucking idiots. Of course, they are idiots, but I mean, anyway, because, you know, think about it. The American people are going, okay, you got a Chinese uh, mothership or an Iranian mothership or, or both. I mean, it sounded like he was saying they were sharing the ship together off the coast and we're not doing anything about it. That made the government really look stupid. <laughs> so, so that story got retracted. And I, there's a third video up. And this is the woman saying, no, these aren't Chinese drones. And these aren't Iranian drones. So what the hell are they? Let's watch that video. Jen, um, Sabrina, can you tell me what the Pentagon is doing to address this issue of drone sightings over New Jersey? It's near sensitive um, installations, the FBI is involved. What is the Pentagon doing? Sure. Um, so at this time, so aware of those drone sightings that have been reported, at this time we have no evidence that these activities are coming from a foreign entity or the work of an adversary. We're going to continue to monitor what is happening, but, um, you know, at no point were our installations threatened when this activity was occurring. Can you rule out that these are American drones or um, U.S. military drones? These are not U.S. military drones. Um, again, this is being investigated by lo local law enforcement. What our initial assessment here is that these are not um, drones or activities coming from a foreign entity or adversary. Um, Representative Jeff Van Drew, um, who is a Republican from New Jersey, was just on the air saying that Iran launched a mothership probably about a month ago that contains these drones and that that mo mothership is off the coast of the east coast of the United States. Is there any truth to that? 
There is not any truth to that. Uh, there is no Iranian ship off the coast of the United States, and there's no so-called mothership launching drones towards the United States. Okay, so that's her busting up that idiot congressman. You can go on uh, X and find that idiot congressman. I just don't want to, uh, you know, rot your brain with the stupid story. You know, that Iran is flying drones. And that, you, know, that, you know, it's always Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia interfered in the election. Russia is a Chinese spy. Tulsi Gabbard's a Chinese spy. Uh, Iran is attacking the United States. I mean, what is wrong with these people? Do, do Americans honestly believe the spin on these? Speaking of spin, this is insane. The Food Network is, has overtaken CNN for viewership. Let that sink in. That's why I call them the legacy media. The legacy media is finally dying. So if CNN is that low, I wonder what MSDNC is. You know, I would hope they got even less viewers. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, of course, then you got ABC, CBS uh, here. It, by the way, and then Fox News, I guess, is doing pretty damn good, even though they're, uh, a lot of the stories they run are lies, too. You, know, you got to be careful when you watch Fox News, but they... They do somewhat. I mean, you got to remember they fired Tucker Carlson because he was revealing too much truth that they didn't want out there. You know, which turned out to be great for Tucker. <laughs> I think, good Lord. I, by the way, there's a new app. I saw that the Tucker Carlson Network app and I installed it on my TV. Now I haven't seen, I think it might be behind a paywall, but if it's uh, real cheap, I pay to watch the Tucker Carlson Network. You know, I bet he's got some really, I mean, good Lord, he just interviewed Lavrov. I mean, but, you know, the thing is, he's posting on X. So it's kind of like, okay, do I want to pay for it? But if it, yeah, if it's 99 cents a month, why not? You know, I'm glad to see the, the private uh, people getting out there. There was one more thing on the alien story that I wanted to cover. I don't know, I'll get it later in the video. Let's move on to the next thing here. Uh, I've been telling you that we get to the uh, the debt, and this was a great post. I think, yeah, this was Insurrection Barbie. Boy, I tell you, she's got a lot of good information. She must have like a staff of people that work for her. Because I'm telling you, I, I, I'm i going like, oh, I like that post. Oh, I like that post. Oh, like, and bookmarking, I'm going, wait a minute, man. How many Insurrection Barbie posts have <laughs> I got bookmarked here? And you're going to find out in this video. But she posted this. I thought this, so the U.S. debt in 1950 was $257 billion. In 1960, $286 billion. And then in 1970, $371 billion. 1980, $907 billion. 1990, $3.3 trillion. 2000, $5.76 trillion. 2008, $10 trillion. 2016, $19.57 trillion. 2019, 3.3 .3 trillion. <laughs> uh, no, uh, 22.72 trillion, excuse me. In 2024, we're at 36 trillion, on our way to 37 in our, and, and probably at less than another 100 days. So you see what I was talking about, it's mathematically impossible for the dollar not to go to zero. The debt is gone exponential. Now, I know Elon and uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. Hey, by the way, this was something that I thought about on the way here. You know, we've got the uh, Department of Government Efficiency. Why shouldn't we, why couldn't we add Ron Paul to that committee? I mean, Ron Paul, he was the only voice of reason in Capitol Hill back when the debt was nowhere near what it is. <laughs> I bet he would be a great addition to that team. And I'm going to post that on X when I get home. So, you know, well, let's add Ron Paul to the Department of Government Efficiency. But you tell me, leave a comment. Don't you think that he would make a great addition? I'm not talking about Rand Paul. I'm talking about his father, Ron Paul. You know, he's got his own uh, podcast. If you ever want to watch him, I think it's called the Liberty, Liberty Channel, Liberty, I don't know, Liberty something or other. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, all right, next story. Oh, and then to add to that, so zero, this was an interesting factoid. Zero Edge, Janet Yellen, has personally overseen 16.7 trillion, or 46% of the 
of the debt increase in the history of the United States. <laughs> so when you think, when you look at that little woman and think, oh, she kind of looks like a, a, a nice grandmother. No, she's an evil grandmother, man. I, I imagine she's out there, you know, she's like Hansel and Gretel, man. She's out there stirring them kids in a pot, cooking them up. She's a witch, man. Janet Yellen. And I think she's pretty stupid, too. <laughs> but who am I to say? But anyway, so this was, uh, th these were more of the facts. Uh, so the U.S. debt rose by $8.2 trillion while Yellen was the Fed chair or vice chair, and by $8.5 trillion while she was the Treasury secretary. Janet Yellen, this is her comment, I am concerned about federal fiscal stability, and I am sorry. <laughs> sorry. You know, you're sorry when you step on somebody's toe. Uh, you're sorry if you called somebody a bad name uh, and it turned out that it wasn't them that did it, you know. You're sorry when you overcook the turkey and, and it explodes, you know. You're not sorry when you freaking threw the government, I mean the dollar, into oblivion and bankrupted the United States. That's not something you're sorry for. That's something you go to jail for, man. You go to jail for that. <laughs> Janet Yellen to jail. Let's put grandma in jail, man. Oh my God. So that was a, that's a hell of a story, isn't it? Uh, anyway, but uh, so I, I, you know, once again, just start preparing. I noticed silver back up over 32. I tell you, it's just kind of fluctuating around from maybe 30, 30, 50 up to 33. It's just kind of hovering right around in there. But I was watching some, uh, some videos uh, today and they were talking that the breakout is probably going to take place of course you've been hearing this since the 1970s <laughs> but, uh, but anyway there are some really uh smart people that are saying that silver should break out in the early part of 2025 i guess we'll find out uh one little tidbit uh before i get into the next topic is uh i was as before i came out here douglas mcgregor said that russia has ordered uh, all Russians to start thinking about getting out of the United States or told them to get out of the United States. I mean, you can't make them, but I mean, he's, they put up an advisory. So that, that, that concerns me quite a bit. I mean, when the Russians are telling their people get out of the United States, that tells me that, you know, something could happen. I mean, my God, I mean, what took place in Syria, that's something else. So I have a, I have a video on Syria, rather than me uh, uh, talk about what's going on, well, I just, I want to talk about the things that you're not hearing about real quick. Because you can study, you know, all of the, the battle plans, like if you know Israel is going to be, well, it looks like they're going to take Damascus. Uh, they, they got their tanks, they're, they're taking a huge swath of Syrian territory. Uh, so that's, uh, and then of course, Turkey looks like they're going to come across and attack the Kurds, uh, just to talk briefly about it. Because uh, they don't like, they're in, in uh, northern Syria and also probably maybe even in Iraq. Uh, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the caliphate. But let's, uh, let me just show you a little bit of what's going on over there. Let's watch this video of them burning down a church. <laughs> Wow, that was insane, wasn't it? Boy, it looked like a beautiful building before they destroyed it. Why Why do the Islamic terrorists always want to destroy everything? And for what I, like I told you in the, well, I didn't, I think I didn't post that video. I got sick. Uh, but anyway, in a previous video, I was talking about the fact that uh, they're destroying all the monuments of Assad and, of course, a lot of Christian uh, places. Um, a lot of people are saying that the Christians there are not safe. Uh, there's a lot of videos now of people uh, getting uh, dragged through the streets by cars, uh, uh, hung. I saw one of a guy getting hung. Now, the thing is, I can't verify those videos, say 100% certain that these aren't old videos and people are posting them for real, but they weren't community noted. So I have to take a, take a grain of salt. So 
there are a lot of people dying right now in Syria. And that whole thing was engineered by uh, Turkey, the United States. Of course, the, the weapons came out of Qatar. That was Pe Pepe Escobar. Like I told you, watch that video. Uh, that was a news story to me. I didn't know that. Uh, the United States, of course, provided the weapons to, to Qatar, and they, they got them to the, uh, the Islamic terrorists that took over uh, Syria. Anyway, that, that's a whole story in, in and of itself. Let's get off of Syria. I said I wasn't even going to talk about it, but I've been watching so much stuff on it. <laughs> it just fills my brain, man. I apologize for that. Uh, so here we go. Uh, getting back on the United States, I want to talk about this for a minute. The United States Postal Service just reported a $9.5 billion loss in fiscal year 2024, uh, adding to its approximately $100 billion in losses since 2007. I mean, what the hell are we paying for a postal service for? You know, we've got electronic means of communicating now with email and everything. Okay, some things do have to go through the mail. I, I dare say you could get your mail one day a week and that'd be just fine. Be fine with me. I don't need the postal service coming out six days a week. You know, there was talk way back. I remember they were saying they were going to get rid of Saturdays. And people were crying about that. I guess all these old people, they still use snail mail for everything. I don't know. I don't know why they can't, you know, get, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I, I don't use the snail mail, you know, but anyway, well, you're, you're technically, you're that cyber security guy. Okay. Well, maybe so, but I mean, you know, I, I've known people who were, you know, construction workers who knew more about computers than I do because, you know, they just wanted to learn. You know, sometimes you got to get out and learn about things. But anyway, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, what, that would be one thing that the, the Department of Government Efficiency should do right away is cut that work week, well, just, let's just say in half. Maybe they work, uh, you know, one, one thing I thought of was uh, they could work Monday through Thursday, uh, 10 hours a day, or if you wanted to scale them back, just work eight hours a day, 32 hours, you know, and then get that, you know, because I, I bet they would love having a three-day weekend, right? We don't need mail on Saturdays. Who the hell looks at I mean, you're, that's the weekend, man. Who, <laughs> who's doing it? Well, I guess you could do your bills on the weekend because you're busy working during the week. But I mean, but still, I mean, think about it. And then the trucks, have you ever noticed the trucks that the, uh, the mail service drives? I mean, we should have bought, I mean, I, I understand they're Japanese cars. But we should have bought a bunch of Priuses. For them to deliver mail in. Prius, my Prius Prime, I'm getting 92 miles to the gallon, man. <laughs> you ever see one of them mail trucks that looks like a box? I bet that thing only gets 14 miles to the gallon. And you wonder why they're a hundred billion dollars in debt. Is it just me or is, is it are these just common sense items? I, I you all right, what's your idea for a, a decreasing the cost? And plus look at the stamps. My God, remember back when stamps were five cents <laughs> and, it, and they can't even make ends meet? Well, what is it now? I don't even know what a cost of a stamp is. I haven't bought one in so long. I, what is 60 cents, I'm saying, just to deliver a freaking envelope when you can just pop on an email and it's free? Well, free, free, well, you got to pay for your internet connection, but still, why aren't people, why are people sending stamp mail, man? Uh, I don't get it. All right, so that, that's on the post office. Boy, I tell you, it's really bugging me on that alien thing. I can't get it in my brain. What the hell I wanted to add to that. Ah, uh, this was interesting. Oh, this is just funny as hell. <laughs> I'm going to put this up. And the, 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 this graphic is awesome, isn't it? I'm, gonna, the, I'm showing you the graphic right now. This is Dr. Sam and Goddick. I tell you, he puts up a lot of good posts. So, uh, he's, as, he's as much anti-Democrat as I am, almost, <laughs> or anti-government, or you know, because he was he was one of the ones who lost his job because he was trying to warn people about the jab. If you don't know who he is, and he's living down in Brazil now, actually doing pretty damn good. He must have had some money, you know. But he went down and he bought a bunch of land, and uh, and he's farming it now, and he's really uh, you know he's enjoying life. But anyway, I, but he says. Uh, Leftist logic, not being racist is racist now. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So, so that's a, that's a, that's the Democrats. You know, you're to I've always said you're, my toaster is racist to a Democrat. My dog, because he's a white dog now, he's a racist dog. Obviously, he's a racist. Probably barks at black people everywhere they go. You know, which not he doesn't. 
anyway. Uh, all right, so then we got Senator Mitch McConnell collapses in the uh, in in the Senate, and uh, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of, of his medical condition, but a lot of people are speculating that uh, they're saying it's it's pretty bad. But I wanted to just talk about that in general. Why do we have so many? I mean, other than the fact that stupid Democrats keep voting these people in, and I'd look at Mitch McConnell as a Democrat, not a Republican. Kentucky, you freaking idiots. Why the hell have you been voting for that idiot fool for so long? But anyway, uh, but the question is, number one, why do we want to put a bunch of freaking nursing home geriatrics in Congress? Uh, so why are people voting for that? And number two, okay, why in the hell do they want to stay? I mean, I'm going to tell you, the, the worst time of my life was working in Washington, D.C., I mean, the, the corruption and the evil. I mean, you know, Washington, D.C. is the only place where you get on an elevator and nobody speaks to each other. You know, you're going down the hallway. You know, you know, a lot of times you go, how are you doing? You know, some, no, in Washington, D.C., they, they think you're crazy. It's kind of like in New York. <laughs> We're going to get on New York in just a minute. But uh, it, so, yeah, I mean, you know, in Washington, D.C., it, and plus, you know, you look at, you know, here's somebody getting paid 250000 government benefits, a pension, and everything, and they're working six hours a day. That was back in the in the 80s. Good Lord, uh, can you imagine what it's like today? Uh, the Gov Department of Government uh, Efficiency is going to have a tough damn time. I'm going to tell you that right now. But uh, so anyway, my, my question to you is, at some point in life, I assume you're going to retire. I mean, I, I understand you got these people like Rush Limbaugh, but he thought he was saving the world. Plus, Rush, I think, loved his job. And to him, that wasn't work. It, it made him who he was, you know. Uh, but, you know, when you look at like a carpenter, or, they love their work too. But eventually the body gives out. Or you got, you know, a nurse. She might love her job, but you reach a point where it's just like, you know what, I just want to be with family. You know, I want to do, or I, you know, I... If nothing else, I would just want to pursue some other things in life. You know, when I got cancer the second time and I knew I couldn't go back to work, I uh, I said, you know what? I want to start my own my own business, my own cybersecurity business. It was very exciting. It failed, <laughs> but, uh, and I wrote a book that nobody bought. But uh, hey, you know, at least I tried, and it, it, it did give me a lot of pleasure doing it. But I mean, I had no desire, even if I, I could have gone back to work. I would have had no desire to go back to work. So why do these people want to stay? I mean, other than the power. I guess the power is just the, the main thing to them. You know, Mitch, uh, he feels that power. He loves the power. But wouldn't you want to be with your grandkids? Wouldn't you want to buy a dog and go enjoy nature? Or in, in, in his case, where he's got tons and tons of money, you know, maybe a cabin in the woods where you could go and be with nature. Maybe go for some hikes, you know, learn a little bit about cooking, cook up some, some good meals, you know, learn about other things. Why in the hell do you want to stay until you die <laughs> in the U.S. Congress? The most god-awful place on the planet, man. I mean, you, you heard good people say, oh, my God, it was, it was beyond anything I imagined when I finally got. Those are the good people, you know. I guess if you're evil, you just want to stay forever like Nancy Pelosi. Man, she is one ugly woman, isn't she? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine being... No wonder her husband cheated on her with a guy. Holy shit, the guy looked better than she did, man. Oh, and I'm not even gay. All right, let's get to the next story here. Uh, oh, yeah, this is, this is Insurrection Barbie again. And I thought this was a really good post. Because you know how much I love Democrats. <laughs> And this is all, of, I told you I'd get to the New York. This is it. Insurrection Barbie. In New York, if you try to remove squatters from property you own, you get arrested. If you pay back your bank loans with interest, you, uh, you, they try to bankrupt you. If you defend someone's life on the subway, they arrest you for murder. Good is bad and bad is good. Right is wrong and wrong is right. You are not safe. Your assets are not safe. Your home is not safe. Your family's not safe. Democrats have destroyed New York. 
<laughs> and yet people still want to live there. Now I wanted to talk about that, that trial uh, just a minute. Okay, obviously he was found not guilty, which I mean, obviously, I mean, everybody in the country knew he wasn't guilty of anything, but I wondered, people aren't addressing why that whole thing took place. And this is, this is how I feel about that, okay? This is all about the lawyers. The lawyers on both sides making money, okay? Lawyers on both sides. So somebody pointed out to me, they said, well, Alvin Bragg's a prosecutor. All he gets is a salary. No, man, it was behind the scenes. He gets kickbacks for bringing up cases like that. You think he ain't in George Soros's pocket? I mean, George Soros funded his campaign. There's a lots of ways to get money to a corrupt prosecutor like Alvin Bray, okay? So for him to bring that case, he's making money. I can guarantee that. And then, of course, the defense attorneys, you say, well, you know, we had to defend him. Well, number one, it was a case that should have never gone up. But the reason they did it is because probably the lawyers on the other side are going, yeah, yeah, be sure and bring that case because we're going to make a ton of money because we're going to fleece the American people because they're going to feel sorry for this guy who did nothing wrong but protect a bunch of people, a good Samaritan. And uh, and so we can charge whatever fees we want because I think they made millions of dollars. Now, think about it. Daniel, he's not going to get a damn thing. Uh, all it does is pay his lawyer's fees. So they got rich. So you see how they're burning the candle on both sides? It's all corrupt, man. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. I think the defense attorneys are in cahoots with the prosecutors to bring these stupid cases because then they know that the American people are going to give them money or give money to defend the person so that they can make money. Just my thoughts on that. What do you think? So let's get to the next story here. Sorry, my notes got messed up here. Whew. All right. Uh, uh, this is Derek Evans. A Utah man drives his car through the front of a Mazda dealership just hours after purchasing the car from the same dealership. He wanted to return the car and was told he couldn't. He then told them he would drive it through the front door, and he did. <laughs> Let's watch that video right now. This is awesome. Shit! I want the car. I told you, motherfuckers. Oh, Whoa! Oh, shit. Call the cops! Shit! I want the car. I told you, motherfuckers. Oh, Whoa! Oh, shit. Call the cops! All right, so that was just a brief video, but I did want to talk about that for just one second because I don't really, well, number one, I can understand him being pissed off, but I will tell you just a quick dumb story about myself. I got a lot of dumb stories about me. I've done everything wrong. But uh, anyway, back up in uh, Virginia, uh, no, it was in Virginia. Where was I? I think I was in Michigan, maybe. I don't know where the hell I was. I've, I've been so many places in my life, you know, including Kuwait. Uh, but anyway, so I bought this uh, Ford Thunderbird. I don't know what I was thinking. I couldn't afford it. I was so far in debt. I was like, you know, but I just, I just wanted, I, actually it was my dad that was pushing me into it. I was driving at that time a, uh, uh, a Plymouth Valiant. And of course the reverse gear was out on it and it was in bad shape, but it still ran. That six cylinder, man, I'm going to tell you, that was one of the greatest cars ever. And uh, anyway, cause I, I thought, well, you know, maybe I just should get a new car and, and make sure that, you know, I've got something uh, that's that's good. So I bought that Thunderbird. It was good guy back then. I don't remember. It was huge amount of money. And I, I had a lawyer friend of mine because I, I, I immediately, you know how you are when you know you've done something wrong. I was just like, oh man, I wonder, I got I want to talk to this lawyer. So I called him up and I said, look, man, I've, I made a huge mistake, a huge mistake. I said, can I, what can I do? He says, well, when did you buy the car? I said, well, uh, yesterday. He says, go get in the car, put the keys in the ignition, and drive it right back to the dealer. I said, well, wait a minute. Are they going to take it? He says, by law, whatever state I was in, I can't remember. That by law, you have three days to return the vehicle, uh, to, to reconsider your purchase. Because, you know, you get into those high-pressure. I tell you, the salesman, back then I was pretty susceptible to the high-pressure sales tactics. You know, oh, you can afford it. We can do this, that, and the other, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, so yeah, so I fell right into that, that high pressure sales tactic. And that's why I knew I had done something wrong. But anyway, so I, 
I brought it back. Boy, that salesman was upset. <laughs> it was a, that was a juicy commission that he lost. And I gave him the keys and I said, according to my lawyer, I have three days to return this car and this is just day two. So here, here's your car back. So my question is, okay, how could the dealer not say they wouldn't take the car back? Uh, and what state doesn't allow you three days to return the car? I don't know. Is that just a state? I guess that's just a state law. Obviously, it's probably not a, it's not a federal law. Anyway, um, getting on. Can you believe a mosquito's out? It's 60 freaking degrees out here. <laughs> My God. I tell you, I don't understand Florida sometimes. The mosquitoes never die. I mean, it's been cold. We've had some uh, 30 degree nights. I mean, it's not like they're thick or anything. All right, let's just get to the next story here. So, um, uh, by the way, I did want to show you uh, a video on Siri. I'm sorry I didn't get it up. Well, actually, never mind. I'll, I'll put that video up. No, let's just never mind. Let's 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 show you a video on Syria. Uh, this is uh, Lord Bebo. Israel devastated by but the Syrian Navy in La Tikai Kia. Massive bombing of all of Syria. Israel ju just a few kilometers outside of Damascus. We talked about that already, but let's watch the video of, of what the uh, the uh, uh, shipyard looked like. الحقيقة الآن مثلا على سبيل المثال وهذه الصور التي وصلت إلينا التي تظهر آثار الدمار في ميناء اللاذقية وذلك جراء القصف الإسرائيلي يعني سوف نبقى نتابع هذه الصور وأنت تجيب على السؤال تفضل يعني ميناء اللاذقية سواء كان الميناء التجاري أو ميناء البيضاء 22 عام قضيتهم في هذا المكان الزوارق الموجودة في الميناء التجاري أو الزوارق الموجودة في ميناء البيضاء وهي مقر قيادة اليو 110 لا تشكل أي خطورة على إسرائيل مدى الصاروخ الإسرائيلي ست أضعاف مدى الصاروخ البحري الموجود في اليو 110 والزوارق الصاروخية إذا اليوم ليست الغاية كما تقول إسرائيل ضرب الأهداف أو الأسلحة الاستراتيجية في سوريا لا توجد أسلحة استراتيجية التقدم خمسة كيلومتر أو عشر كيلومتر أو سيطرة على المنطقة العازلة أو التقرب من دمشق م. الأمن الإسرائيلي لا يتحقق من خلال عشرين كيلومتر اليوم الطيران الحوسي يأتي من ألاف الكيلومترات الصواريخ والمسيرات تأتي من إيران وبالتالي عشرين كيلومتر لن تضيف أي ميزة أو لن تعطي أي حصانة للأمن الإسرائيلي هذا إذا كانت ماذا تريد إسرائيل بأعمال جمية إسرائيل تبحث عن هدف سياسي تبحث عن تنازل عن الجولان تبحث عن سوريا الدولة الفاشلة تبحث عن سوريا الدولة من زوعة السلاح هذا الكلام لا يمكن يعني قلنا من أن هذا الأمر يمكن أن يفرض كأمر واقع على غزة لظروف معينة يمكن نتيجة ما كان يقوم به حزب الله من أن تجرده من السلاح وتجعل منطقة عزلة في الجنوب الثاني لأمر ما جميل جدا يعني احترام سيادة الدول هو يعني بند أو عنوان عريض قانوني يجب أن نشير إليه هنا لكن كيف يمكن أن نرد مثلا؟ على مزاعم إسرائيلية تقول إنه هذه الدولة الجارة يعني يسيطر عليها أناس أو فصائل بما يعكس خطرا على دولة إسرائيل بحسب مزاعمهم هم بحسب ما يقولون هم يعني أولا الهواجس نتفاهم هذا الأمر م. لدول الجوار إن كان تركيا أو العراق أو سوريا أو إسرائيل أو لبنان أي دولة مجاورة نتفاهم تلك الهواجس لكن أيضا يجب أن ننظر بعين واقعية لإمكانيات كل الأسلحة التي قصفتها إسرائيل لا تشكل أي خطورة على إسرائيل All right, so that was that and then I went and I found another video that actually the IDF put it out of them just bombing the shit out of Syria Let's just, I mean, this is an Israeli video. So if you're happy that they're bombing the hell out of Syria, uh, and by the way, why would they be bombing Syria? I thought that these people that just overthrew Assad are their allies, okay? Does this tell you something? That they don't want the, the weapons, the Syrian weapons falling in the hands of the terrorists that just took over Syria? What do you think of that? Let's watch that IDF video right now. 
זה אבי דייק, כאילו אנחנו משימה ברצף על כל הכלים. הישג משמעותי מאוד למדינת ישראל, הישג מאוד 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 All right, so that was that was those two videos. So we get into this is uh, this is great. Now we're getting back to the Democrats. You know, I love to talk about Democrats. Insurrection body, Barbie, money 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 laundering 101. Biden got Hunter on the board of Burisma, even though he had zero qualification to sit on the board of an energy company. Hunter got paid eighty three thousand per month for doing nothing, and then uh, and then rented Joe's house and paid him $50,000 a month, <laughs> $44,653 above the market rate. So you see how that works? 10% 10, 10 for the big guy, or 20% or whatever it was. That, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, that's how you launder money, baby. That's how you, Democrats are good at it. They laundering all that money through Ukraine. Look at all the money they're sending over to Ukraine right now. Ah, you know what? 50% of that money goes into the uh, Iraqi... Uh, uh, General's pockets, uh, Zelensky's pockets, 50% uh, of the military equipment gets sold on the black market. You know, probably went to, some of it went to those terrorists that just took over Syria. You know, boy, I tell you, the Democrats are good at laundering money. No doubt about it. This is another one. Insurrection Barbie again. I told you, I, she's got some good posts. Uh, Sam Bankman freed, defrauded investors of $10 billion and got 25 years in prison. Oh, and he donated very heavily to Democrats. <laughs> and Ricky Torres burned a BLM flag, wasn't even at the Capitol on, on, Jan on January 6th, and got sentenced to 22 years in prison. The most insidious privilege is Democrat privilege. <laughs> no doubt about it. Launder $10 billion and give it all to the Democrats. Oh, my God. Did you see the amount of money that he gave to the Democrat Party? Yeah, they didn't give that money back. That money was illegal. That money should have gone back to the people that got defrauded. You think the Democrats care about the American people? Do you think they care about the people that lost all that money? Hell no. Especially when it went in their pocket. That's all they care about. All right, let's keep going. All right. Let's see. And this is uh, continuing. Let's, considering a, a blanket preemptive pardon for government officials who have wronged the American people is indicative of of how much the Democrat Party hates its voters. <laughs> I've been talking about that, haven't I? <laughs> this is Insurrection Barbie again. You know, I, I, you know, if, if your, your politician hates you, why do you vote for him? I mean, look at AOC. Let's get on AOC for just one second. Well, actually, let me finish reading this before I, I get... Uh, if Ronnie, uh, are we not people? Do we not deserve to see government officials who wrong, wronged us held accountable? There are not cases against one victim... These are crimes against the American people. So I wanted to talk about AOC for just a second. Boy, is she dumb as a bag of stones or what? <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I, I, I remember back during that election, and I might have talked about this in a previous video, but there was a woman running against her who was, I mean, down to earth from the Bronx. I think she was running as a Republican. And I'm going to tell you what, man, she was sharp as a tack, and she was talking about all the corruption and everything. And then, you know, I don't remember if you remember that video of AOC sitting on the stage going, hold on, hold on, you know, and because the guy came in and 
you know, talked about the fact that, you know, she said she was against war and voted for every, <laughs> every dollar going to Ukraine, every, every war. She loves war now, that's for sure. But anyway, so, uh, but th this woman was so good. And she's been living in the Bronx her whole life. I would have thought that the people in the Bronx would have gone, hey, man, this is one of our own, this AOC lunatic. Let's get rid of her. No, they voted AOC in. Now, it could have been a lot of cheating, probably a lot of cheating going on in that election. But still, I mean, you would have had to cheat a hell of a lot to get the numbers that AOC got. And this other woman who was really fantastic. I, I, I liked her a lot. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley. Let's put it that way. She was buff, man. And, uh, and yet... She didn't get elected. Doesn't make sense. It's kind of like Adam Schiff. Shifty Shift. Why in the hell did the Californians vote for that dude? I, they're talking about he might be a senator if Trump doesn't bring him up on charges for all the... Remember the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax? Don't you think that, you know, and he lied? Remember he lied about the Ukraine letter? And then Trump posted the letter saying, okay, if you're going to lie about what was said in that conversation, I, I got a transcript. Let's just post the transcript. And then Shifty Schiff still continue with it, and the Democrats still impeach Trump over a perfect letter. I mean, a perfect conversation. Oh, my God, don't let me get me started. Then we got uh, D.C. Dranko. Kind of crazy how we know more about the United Healthcare CEO assassin after five days than we know about Trump's uh, Pennsylvania assassin after five months. <laughs> well, we all know the reason why. The FBI, the corrupt FBI, they whitewashed that whole thing. Remember, they cremated the body after, what, a day? You know, they couldn't get that body gone fast enough. And then, of course, they, they went in. They took down the stands so that you couldn't do any forensics on the stands. Those were taken down right away. And then they washed off the roof where the blood was. They took that. I mean, they did that in, in like, you know, less than two days. Well, you know, so that nobody can conduct an investigation. <laughs> and then the Secret Service, you know, they, they had called off all of their, uh, the people there, and nobody was there to, to protect Trump. Oh, my God, that was a setup from the get-go, wasn't it? Uh, you know, but the Democrats, uh, they, they all believe that. This is the end of the video. Peace out. Stay free. You know, if this video is not too long, I wanted to get you this view right here. Maybe we'll put up a video. I found it very, very interesting because Putin pointed out, you know, as we've brought NATO closer and closer to, uh, to Russia, you know, if you recall, uh, um, Gorbachev promised Reagan that we, they wouldn't, that NATO would never expand. And since then, you know, Poland joined NATO, Sweden, Finland, Lithuania, the Baltic states, West Germany. Well, of course, West Germany was part of the bargain to never expand NATO. So you wonder why the Russians are pissed off. Uh, but in my video, uh, th that stage presentation back from 2016, I showed a map of the NATO expansion. So in 1942, it was just a, a few countries. It was, uh, um, and then this is 1982. Now in 1990, um, we promised that the United States promised that the that NATO would not expand one inch eastward, and uh, if they let us unite uh, East Germany and West, let East and West Germany unite, unify. And NATO will stop its expansion. And that was a promise by the United States. Well, where are we today? Uh, this is the NATO expansion and these super dark blue countries. This was 2023 and this was 2020 March of this year, 2024. We're still expanding NATO. The Ukraine wants to be part of NATO, and uh, so that is what this war is being fought about. Uh, Russia can these NATO countries, uh, we can install U.S., it's, base, it's a NATO military base, but it's basically a, a U.S. military base with U.S. weaponry. And so it's in all of these countries right on the border with Russia. Well, what does this do to the threat of nuclear war? Um, here, look at the buffer zone that there was between Moscow, which is slightly misplaced. I have to apologize for that. Moscow is right about here. So uh, this is a map. When, when you're dealing with maps, the borders are constantly changing. And I had to find something that had some uniformity over the period from 1949 to, uh, to 
2016 when I made this presentation. And so I, I settled on a map and then I had my one of my animators and, and uh, graphic artists uh, make this thing. But we keep on, you know, we added um, Denmark, I can't remember what year, but that choke, they can be, all their subs and ships can be monitored now trying to get to the Atlantic. Uh, we keep on adding countries. But look at the buffer zone going across here to Italy and then up West Germany and Norway as far as the distance to Moscow. Uh, and then we were going to unite East Germany and that was it. Just allow East Germany. That's all we would take and look at what has happened since then. And so they just cannot, and Putin has said this, that they cannot allow pretty much at any price, at the price of World War III, they cannot allow Ukraine to become a member of NATO and have U.S. military bases. They're going to be NATO bases, but with all the U.S. weapons and a bunch of U.S. soldiers right on their border. This is the cause of this war in Ukraine. But anyway, he gave a speech where he talked about Russia's reaction. There's a, that should be Venus right there. Pretty cool, huh? Where he talked about uh, Russia's response to NATO encroaching and why they went to war in Russia, or Ukraine, of course. And that is that uh, they decided, it, it said it would be a lot cheaper to de develop offensive weapons than it was to develop a defense, defense shield. Because uh, Russia back then, if you recall, their economy was pretty bad. So that's what they've done, and that's where the originate came from. And they're saying they got, they got other weapons that are even worse than the Arishnik. And I did a video on that, showed you the flight times. What was it, like 17 minutes from Moscow to, to or from the launch base to uh, France. Just saying. Well, it's gonna get dark on me. Probably not a good idea to have that little morsel out here. <laughs> Something did attack. Well, at least it go for him first, right? <laughs> no, actually I'd step in between. Love that dog. Okay, so let's, uh, I forgot a post and I wanted to get it in here because I thought this was very interesting. This was the one that I was thinking of. Okay, so this is uh, on Syria and uh, this goes um, Bar Baba Vanga, nicknamed the Nostradamus of the Balkans, warned that the fall of Syria would trigger a catastrophic global conflict. <clears throat> in her prophecy, Baba Vinga said, when Syria falls, there will be great war between the West and the East. In the spring, a conflict will break out in the East that will lead to World War III, a war that will destroy the West. As the situation in Syria evolves, there are growing fears that her vision can become or could become a reality. Baba Venga, who died in 1996, became famous for her prophecies, which included the 9-11 attacks, the Kursk submarine disaster. Her warnings about Syria have again attracted attention. Syria will fall at the feet of the victor, but the victor will not be the same. And there's her picture. Boy, doesn't she look like <laughs> a prophet or something, man? I don't know. I, I, it scared the hell out of me in a movie. Well, he made it back. Just thought you guys might want to know. We're just about to the car. But I wanted to show you this. Pretty cool, huh? And a star right over here. I kind of like these evening hikes, you know? I really do.